Hello everyone, and welcome to this new video about level design. In this episode, we're going to see how to create pipes easily in Blender with different tools. Whether you're working on a steampunk game or a plumber movie, there might be some projects of yours that require you to make pipes. And although it can seem a bit difficult to do at first sight, creating dynamic pipes quickly in Blender is actually not that hard. Because actually there's even a basic built-in solution in Blender to shape and model simple pipes in a flash. We can use the Blender Curve tools. Ok, so to get familiar with the concept, let's say we do Shift plus A to open or add menu, and then go to the Curves subsection and create a new Bezier object. You see that this instantly creates a wavy line at the origin of the scene, flat on the ground, that looks like a simple set of two points. This is quite different from a cube, for example. A cube object is a solid mesh which has vertices, edges and faces. On the other hand, curves don't have a visible geometry by default, they only contain points and handles. Basically, the idea is that instead of simply drawing straight edges between vertices, and getting a linear interpolation in the 3D space between all your vertices, with curves you can use more complex interpolation functions and thus get smoother lines or surfaces. The additional handles that you get whenever you select a point in your curve allow you to manually edit these line shapes simply by translating, rotating or scaling them. Note that if you feel a bit shaky on the concept of interpolation, I've actually made a video on that topic very recently, where I showed how interpolation, curves and point handles could be used to tune the animations of our objects in Blender and get a more natural feel. Here it's basically the same idea, except that we apply the concept to drawing a path or a surface between various curve points. So the nice thing of using curves is that you can very easily tweak the shape of your edges we usually call them segments in the context of curves, in between the points. Of course, vertex level control is also a bit more difficult, so if you need really precise meshes, you might be better off with the usual mesh editing tools and techniques. But here for pipes it's quite cool, cause we can quickly create dynamic editable shapes that look like basic pipes. To do this and learn a bit more about Blender curve objects, let's start simple and make a series of straight pipe chunks like this. The process is fairly simple. First, let's select our point on the left and press X to remove it, by selecting the Delete Vertices option. The point on the right is now the only element inside our curve object. Now if we keep it selected, we can then press E to create a new point connected to this one by a new curve segment. It's just like doing an extrude in the usual mesh editing workflow. So we can press X to snap our extrude direction to the X axis, and drag our cursor to the left to recreate our previous left point. We've basically reconstructed our initial curve with the same curve points, except that, as you can see, the handles are now a bit different. Instead of lifting up the curve on the left like before, the handle of our left point is now completely flat, and so we get this straight line. Now if we want our pipe to go up in this direction, the logical next step would be to extrude again and drag our new point over here, right? Well, yes, but you see that, this time, the handles aren't right. Because the handles remain horizontal, instead of having a straight line between our second and third points, we now have this strangely curvy line. To fix this, what we can do is tell this curve object to handle interpolation differently. More precisely, we have to tell it to go back to linear interpolation, just like what Blender does automatically for common meshes. To do this, let's press A to select all our curve points, and then right-click. This brings up the curve context menu that contains a bunch of curve-related tools. Here the one we're interested in is the handle type. Picking a different handle type from this list will tell Blender that we want a different type of interpolation between each point. To get a linear one, let's click on the Vector option. Ok, that's great, you see we now have straight segments as expected. To finally get a more pipe-looking object, we need to change a few settings in our curve object itself. 
For that, we're gonna head over to the Object Data Properties Inspector panel, which is accessible with this little green curve icon, and then open up the Geometry section. This is where you can use your curve basic data, the points and handles, to create a visible mesh. Here we'll just increase the bevel depth option from 0, and there we are! You see it instantly creates a sort of cylinder that is wrapped around our curve segments and follows the lines. Of course, at this point, you might think that we could do that with basic mesh editing. But what's great is that if we move a point around, the cylinder follows automatically. And what's even better is that we're not limited to straight pipes. Because we're using a curve object, we can always change the handle type of one or more points and use a more complex interpolation to get circular or even S shapes. Depending on the shape you make, you might get some bits that are a bit crude and blocky. To avoid this, you can always increase the curve's resolution preview U parameter, and you'll see it makes the curve smoother. But as usual, don't forget it's a trade-off between quality and efficiency. So the higher this parameter, the prettier the curve, but the heavier the tool on your machine. Now, there are of course a lot of additional parameters we could play with to further explore the features of Blender Curves, but let's be honest, this pipe isn't that great. This method could probably work for a low-poly style or an object in the distance with a low resolution, but it clearly lacks some style. So to level up our pipe making, let's now switch over to another tool a free pipeline generator plugin by Ray Wakui that relies on geometry nodes and produces way better and far more realistic results. Similar to the last Blender plugin we discussed in this series, the Buildify add-on, this plugin is available for free on Gumroad. You can of course support the author by donating, but you can also get the assets entirely for free, and once you get the plugin, you'll have a Blender scene that contains all the base geometry node setup for creating your own pipes. So if we copy this reference file and open our new Blender scene, you see that it contains a basic example with a couple of pipe segments and a nice material when we turn on Random Mode. If we look at the Properties panel on the right, we see the object uses a geometry node instance with various parameters like the pipe's thickness, the size of the connector rings, or the random seed to use. And if we switch to the geometry nodes layout, we see this system relies on several sections. In short, the system first creates the pipe base structure, then it adds connectors at regular intervals, for example when the pipe turns, and then it adds extra details like rivets or valves. Ok, that's very cool, but now how do we change the shape of our pipes and add new sections? Well, if we tap into edit mode, we see it's actually a curve object under the hood. So all the knowledge we just acquired can directly be applied to this more evolved pipe system, and we can extrude or drag and transform our handles to adapt the shape of our pipes to our liking. By the way, I didn't want to spoil the surprise, but Blender actually shows us what type of object we're dealing with in the hierarchy panel too. This little curve icon is for curve objects, while usual mesh objects are represented by a triangle icon. Thanks to Blender Curves and Ray Wakui's plugin, it's therefore possible to quickly design realistic looking pipes with all the extra details that make them interesting and to fill your scenes with all the plumbing you need. And on that note, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about level design tools and that you're now all set for creating your own pipe-filled scenes in Blender. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment with your own ideas for future level design tutorials. As always, thanks for watching, and take care.